Dan Asakis, Grubius Pip. You're, you've, you've been here not very long, really. Maybe 20 minutes. Maybe. About that. Long enough to get some water. That was it. That's it so far. We've got some water. We've arrived and it all looks like absolute mayhem. So it's going to be good. Well. well, I did. Yeah, you haven't yet. But you never break a sweat. So what's the matter with you, exactly? I've got a cold. I brought a British cold with me. I'm trying to, I'm trying to poison the Texans, basically, because they've never felt a proper British cold. What, the problem, the, the sniffling, the, the feeling kind of sorry for yourself, cup of tea, phoning your mum, have some soup, they're just not used to that. The moaning, that's, it's very British. The congestion as well, proper congestion. I can't, can't hear out of that here, so, you know, it's going to be a good gig tonight. Proper British phlegm. Oh, yeah, the best phlegm. And I smoke as well, which I'm hiding a cigarette under the table because there's a camera. So, uh, yeah, no, it's going to be good. I've got smoky, cold phlegm. I'm happy. You are going to be beating them off with a stick, aren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's going to be great. So tell us what you're doing here at South by Southwest. Is it one show, two shows? How does your, how's your next few days kind of pan out? Uh, we're doing three shows while we're here. We just did in New York and Chicago the last two nights, and now we're in Austin for three, uh, three shows and loads of fun and shenanigans and then we're off to do a san francisco and la but it's good to be in one place for three days kind of thing because it is the rest of it is play a gig fly somewhere play a gig fly somewhere so yeah it should be cool and they and they're spaced out as, as well we've got one that's at like 10 p.m and then the one the next day is like in the middle of the night at like one and the one the next day is like at lunchtime so it's good it's not all 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 evening and we get to see all different parts of the week of the week so are you a finely tuned rock touring machine these days? Oh yeah, oh, too too finely tuned. We get places on time, you know. We do actual sound checks now. It's weird. Boring. Like it's, it's so finely tuned. It's it's boring. There's no there's no rock and roll element at the moment. We're going to inject that back in soon. But on these tight schedules, it is so sober and uh, and and uh, and well thought out. Who's wandering around up there now? Who's who's like a? I think they call him a tour manager. I've heard of them, but we we hadn't met one until a couple of days ago. And yeah, he keeps it too well oiled. We are too oily. Because I saw you at Glastonbury last year. I chatted to you there, and it was more kind of just like you knew you were playing somewhere at some point more than once. You didn't really know when it was going to happen or how it was going to happen. Do those days seem you know long behind you? Just like I know, like sort of Led Zepp looking back at playing the dog and duck in, in sort of Nottingham and thinking, oh, you know, there's, maybe we should get back to our roots already. See, I, I, I don't think it's actually changed. It's just there's <laughs> someone with us now who does know all that stuff. Because we're still, I couldn't tell, a guy just came up and was saying, oh, where are you playing tonight? I'm like, uh, is a, 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 a rooftop, something, roof, I, I don't know where, but we've got someone who does know. That's why it's organised now. There's someone to babysit us. Some sort of barbecue yeah, we're that's, playing that's at. Some... There's a barbecue in a Johnny Cash themed bar I know that one. That's going to be good. <laughs> They're very into the barbecues. There's lots of barbecues and gigs at the same time. Lots of meat. How are you getting on in terms of living out of each other's pockets at the moment? So, uh, have either of you had like a sort of Fleetwood Mac-esque cocaine-driven split up or anything? No. <laughs> we, we're very boring. We, uh, we know to keep out of each other's away uh, uh, when we get a chance. And that's the same with anyone. You're on the road. <laughs> if you've got chances to be just getting on with your... Sh stuff almost <laughs> swore then getting on with stuff then then you take it and then all the time you are actually together it is it's all talking about new tracks and it, it keeps it exciting and fun and it's quite good because there's only two of us so this that idea if there's like five or six of you cramming into like two rooms in a hotel you're gonna argue whereas we can we we get paid the same as everyone else so we can afford two rooms and just have our own space it's all right man Right. He's, he's, he's lying there. The reason we have two rooms is Dan snores really loud, and I can't. I, we've, after like, we shared rooms like four times, I think. We then said we'll take a, a lower fee as long as we can get two rooms. It's like if they say you can only have one room, then we'll drop the fee so we can have two, because I can't. Sh I, I literally don't sleep all night. What kind of snore is it? Is it. Oh, sorry. Are you okay? I didn't mean to That's all right. Hey, um, what kind of snoring is it? Because I used to the share, best. I used to do the best. That kind of back of the throat. It's louder as well. Uh, when we did 
a Ben Kazim was the last time we shared a room, <laughs> and we were share, uh, we were staying in the same hotel room as like the B fifty two, not hotel room, hotel was, <laughs> as like, really the B fifty twos and loads of like really human cool league. human league were there, and it's like. A, <laughs> The rooms were all around a courtyard, yeah? So we were asleep in our room and the window's open and Dan's snoring. I'm throwing stuff at him to try and stop. D didn't work. And people from other rooms were shouting, shut up and stop snoring. People from other rooms were being kept awake by Dan snoring. And I'm hoping it was a Human League chap or the yeah, B-52s yeah, yeah. people. They were grumpy anyway, the Human League that day. I didn't, I didn't spot much of them, I'm sure they were. They were on our coach from the airport. But uh, it was it was the drink that night. I drank too much. And, uh... I, I used to share a room with, with my brother, and he had one of those really insidious kind of the whiny snore. Yeah. He'd have a bit like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> awful. A, a Dan's is far more. It, if you didn't know he was snoring, you'd you'd worry. You'd get someone in to help because it, it does sound like he's choking and convulsing and all sorts, but a pillow to the face doesn't stop it. I've thrown deodorant cans. Or, a, 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 according to his girlfriend, if you roll him over and just stroke him a bit, he stops. But I'm, that's, there's, a, there's a boulder, like, like there's a line. I'm like, we'll, we'll go for separate rooms instead. I'm not going to the, the, I'll throw stuff, but I'm not going to the roll over and stroke slightly just to. Just snuggle up behind me and cut my breasts. It, it calms me down a bit. <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen. Enjoy yourself by Southwest. You. We will. Cheers. Thank you.